Praise the Lord, saints. Welcome to another Bible study here at Friendship Mission Church for the homeless and the poor here in Montgomery, Alabama. Pastor and founder, Vince Rosada. My name is Minister Warren Rudd. And tonight's Bible study is going to be on simply obey God. There's a lot of verses in the Bible that talks about how we should obey God. Even in the Old Testament, it tells us that God requires obedience. So tonight, we're going to look at obedience of God. We're going to see if we need to obey God. And one of the things that I've learned all this week and through the months is that every time my flesh would act up and I would just line up and obey and submit to God, the devil flee. I found out he has no defense when you decide to obey God. He just runs. And even there's verses like that. But the revelation of when you can defeat the devil is just by you obeying God. So tonight, get your Bibles, your paper, and your pen, as I always say, and get ready for a mighty word from God. And you know me, there you go, right there. Mm-hmm. God bless. Now to my wife. Y'all know our anniversary is tomorrow. Amen. 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 Oh, yeah. Amen. Satisfied to our flesh. 
But do we obey the true and living God that says, I love you enough to save you from that? We wonder why the devil attacks us is because we don't obey God. So we give him free reign in our life because we just won't obey God. And God doesn't give us nothing hard to obey. It was really blowing my mind over the last couple of weeks of getting this revelation. Yeah, I knew it. I knew the scripture said it. I knew all of that stuff. But I still had to come to the revelation of just obeying God. Romans 5. Romans 5, verse 19. You may have to take the baby out before that. Romans 5, 19 says, For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. We know that one man was Adam, right? Many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, shall many be made what? Righteous. Because Jesus obeyed God. That we all can come into the kingdom of heaven. Despite ourselves, through his sacrifice and obedience to God, we are now childs and heirs and adopted into the kingdom of heaven. Amen? Amen. 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 Go to 2 Corinthians. I'm just building the foundation right now. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Everybody know this. Hey, y'all know that all the time. Give yourself a tenfold. You know? 2 Corinthians 10.4. No, go to 10.3. 2 Corinthians 10, 3. And it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Here's the favor, 1, 10, 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not flesh. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What are those strongholds? Anything that's keeping you from obeying God. Amen. Amen. Casting down imagination. Whatever you're thinking about, that's wrong. Wow. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Boss religion, <coughs> right? Job, business. They can exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. When you should, no matter what you're involved in, obey God. Amen? Amen. And bringing into captivity every thought. See? That's something the warfare is lying where? In your head. Thoughts. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of who? Christ. Amen. Ha and having in and readiness to re having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Amen. Amen. Oh. Amen. 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 That's hard. Amen. 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 That is powerful. Yes. That's hard. Now, the reason why I put out all that is because I wanted you to see something. Obedience is hard. And sometimes God will take you to a place where you've got to obey. Amen. Some of you have been brought here just because he says it's time for you to obey. Amen. You know yeah. It's hard on the flesh. Yeah. Especially when your flesh is used to doing things for years. Yeah. You know, I got high for 30 years, 33 years before I decided to obey God and just come to Christ. And then I still disobeyed him for the next 10. Amen. Because my flesh just didn't want to line up. It felt too good, all the stuff that I was doing. I tell people all the time, if, if, if sin felt bad, you wouldn't do it. Amen. We do it because it feels good. Who does sin because it feels bad? Oh, man, I'm going to do that because it feels so bad. No, you do it because it feels good. Amen. And that's all the devil wants you to do because that's direct disobedience against Christ and against the Father. But let's look at what Jesus did. Look at one of the perfect examples of this. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4. Everybody should know this, those who read your Bible. We're going to be looking at Jesus in the wilderness, the temptation in the wilderness. But you know, there's been a misconception that people say that the devil drove him out there. No, we want to see who actually took him out there. Amen? Amen. Let's just start at verse 1. Matthew 4, starting at verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the who? Spirit. So that ain't the devil. God took him out there for this problem. God took him out there for this battle. God took him out here to be tested in his obedience. Amen. So the spirit into what? Let, let up by the spirit into the wilderness to be what? Tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards hungry. And when the tempter, that's the devil, came to him, he said, If thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. How many times do you If you're really a Christian. Hello. Amen. If you really, you know Christians Amen. ain't supposed to do this. Amen. 
Amen. Christians ain't supposed to do that. Are you really a Christian? Amen. Verse 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. This is what we call a rhema battle. In, in Ephesians 6, you will see the armors of God. And one of them is called a rhema, R-H-E-M-A, rhema. Rhema is a Greek word for Pacific word. They're having a sword fight through the mouth. Jesus did not have a Bible with them. So they're having a rhema word fight. Jesus is quoting the scripture, and you're going to see Satan quote the scripture. Jesus is going to quote the scripture, and you're going to see Satan quote the scripture. So they're fighting. Amen. With the word of God. A sword fight. Amen. Verse, verse 5. Then the devil taketh them up into a holy city and set up him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. Here go the devil quote the scripture. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy good foot against a stone. Now he's quoting 91, Psalms 91, verse 12. Okay? When Jesus said, Thou. Uh, Thou shalt not serve uh, no other man but God. He was quoting Deuteronomy 8 3. For every word that proceeded by the mouth of God. Then Jesus answered him with another word. In verse 7, Jesus said unto him, It is written, see? Again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He was quoting Deuteronomy 16. And again, the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, all these things would I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Verse 10. And then, then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Mm -hmm. Then the devil leaveth him. Then the devil leaveth him. And behold, angels came and did what? Minister unto him. So they had a word fight. They were fighting with scripture. And here's the other thing. The devil wasn't standing there physically. Jesus was going on in his head with this stuff. The devil was speaking to him in his head. It, remember what I said? The weapons of a warfare are not carnal, but mighty to God them pouring down the strongholds, casting down every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Jesus, this was in his head. So he had to get that stuff out of his head by calling what? Quoting the word. And the moment he submitted and obeyed the God within the scripture, say verse 11, then the devil leave him. Yeah. Any time you obey God, the devil can't handle him. He got to go. All it is is a temporal thought. There were many a day I was going to go get high. The thought came, and because I acted on it, I did. But then when I began to learn, it was temporal. And I began to change my thought. What was that, Jeffrey? Uh, SRT, scriptural replacement thought. Yeah. Change it. And the next time I was like, where'd it go? Amen. It was gone. Because I changed the way I was thinking. Yeah. Your flesh is always going to want to do something contrary to God. Amen. Amen. That's why your spirit has to take over and say, you know what? God said he is for me and not against me. Amen. 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 When you obey God, the devil has no defense against your willingness to be obedient and submissive. When you obey God, the devil has no defense. That was awesome for me. You know what I mean? I kept wondering why I was going through all this stuff week in and week out. I'm serving you, God. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Yeah, I got my little issues. And he said, when are you going to obey me? I don't care what nobody else say. I'm just trying to get them straight, Lord. No, it ain't going to happen. Obey me. And when I began to obey them, that stuff began to just change. And in my obedience, I became submissive. Amen. I dropped what I wanted and decided to give what others needed. Y'all ain't hearing me. Amen. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, my flesh said, I ain't doing it. Amen. I ain't giving them nothing. I ain't helping them. I ain't paying for them. I'm being real. And then all he said was, do you love me? Yeah. Then obey me. And when I obeyed him, not only did I give it, I received more. Amen. And the reward I received wasn't monetary, it wasn't material, it was peace. Amen. It was relaxation. All right, huh? It was comfort that somebody I could trust in got control of this thing, and his name is Jesus. Amen. 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 That's why y'all hear me and my wife say, you know, now we got a thing that we do now. When things get tight, I just look at her and say, honey, I love you. 
And then she looked back at me and said, what you say there? That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. What you say? I said, honey, I love you, what do you say? I said, I respect Then I said, baby, I respect you, what do you say? Baby, I love you. See? Say, God, I'm going to do what you want to do, and he got to go. He 